Welcome to TradersArmy.com, defending your right to build wealth and preserve capital for generations to come. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Wednesday morning edition of the Daily Market Commentary. I'm your host, Chuck Fulkerson. Hope everybody had an amazing trading day yesterday as we have continued our march up. Um, but that march could be coming to some uh, some challenges. So let's go ahead and take a look at what some of those challenges may be. If you're new to the channel, do me a favor, click that subscribe button down below so that you get the updates as they happen uh, and as they become available. So let's go ahead and dive right in. S&P this morning, we're up about six and a half points. Um, you know, a quarter of a percent uh, early this morning, not a whole lot. Uh, but we do have a level up above us that we are starting to come to. Now, yesterday I talked about a potential breakout above this uh, this 2568 level. And uh, we, we hit it early in the day, pulled back, uh, and then rallied up to it. So this was, it was one of those breakouts where we actually hit the breakout and then didn't really do a whole lot. Um, one of the things that if you are, if you're a, a Trader's Army member, I put in the private trade feed about taking some money off the table pretty early in this one because we saw that the momentum had been waning. Uh, and then it, uh, it did come back and break out a second time. But one of the things I notice about what's happening right now um, is if I just throw a quick momentum indicator on here, you'll see that while I, yes, definitely still have higher swing highs or uh, higher swing lows, um, my swing highs are getting a bit closer together, right? My swing highs are getting a bit closer together and my momentum is definitely waning. So with that momentum waning, um, it's going to it's gonna really kind of show me, you know, I need to pay attention to what is the resistance that's up above me, right? What is the resistance that's up above me? And when I'm in a one hour time period, I do have a level up here. Now this level has already almost been tested once and we're coming into it. Now we're not coming into it with a tremendous amount of momentum, right? Our momentum coming into it has been kind of slowed a little bit. However, we are indeed still coming into that region. And on the four hour chart, that doesn't really show up quite as cleanly. Uh, I've got some cleaner areas right in here on the four hour time period, but definitely some weakness is being built up. Uh, it doesn't have the quite the same oomph that it had before. Um, on this uh, on this rally higher, so and it's not just the S and P that we're coming into some serious moment, uh, some serious resistance. There's a there's a lot of stocks that are coming into some pretty strong resistance as well, and and so that's obviously what's going to drive the S and P um, if it hits some of that resistance. So that being said, I'm not necessarily looking to short it until something tells me to do so, uh, and right now I don't really have that. Right, I don't really have that, and this is the this is kind of the 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 I'll call it the waning period um, where there's a lot of different places that the market could could go. It could well, I say a lot. It can go up or it can go down. But it can go it can go down and it can and it can go down until it comes to a decent retracement point. Which right now on an hourly chart we've got this little level right here, um, which I had not marked yesterday. We've got this little level right here. Uh, but on a four hour, that level doesn't really show up, you know, as clearly, right? But it was an area of resistance here. Old resistance oftentimes act as new support. So now we're between a couple of decent levels. What I am going to do is I'm going to take the one hour that's up above us, and I'm going to convert that to a confirmation style entry. And the reason I'm going to convert it to a confirmation style entry is because I don't really love the way that we're approaching this area. We're basing in front of the level, and basing in front of the level turns things to confirmation style entries. Um, this could become, you know, a, a breakout where we break out of here into this level, and then we get the reversal. So either one of those uh, are uh, our potentials. Uh, this level down below, this twenty five thirty four by twenty five twenty five, on a one hour chart, not quite as clean. Uh, not quite as, as clean of, as, of, of a level. On a four hour, it actually looks significantly better than it does on the one hour. Uh, and that would be a decent little pullback for then price to continue to rally higher. So we're, but we're between these areas of, of demand uh, down below us and, and, uh, and overhead supply up above us. But 
our uh, our supply levels that are that are there, we still do need to uh, to kind of keep in mind and pay attention to. Now, this rally that we've gotten here has been a very strong rally off of this bottom. Um, you know, I was originally thinking, you know, that it was shaping up a lot like November was, uh, and and I was wondering, okay, are we gonna come back down and retest those lows? Um, we've gone up significantly higher than we did in that, uh, in that early November rally. And so, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm getting a, a lot better on the daily chart. We don't have a higher swing. High, I've got a higher swing low and a higher swing high in this daily chart. Uh, if we, if we were to reverse right here, then it is pretty much off to the races and it can blow through. Remember if our daily chart and our four hour chart now starts giving me lower swing highs and lower higher swing lows and higher swing highs. Now, all these levels of supply above that are found on the smaller time period aren't going to be as respected. Remember that when we when we look at, you know, you think about impulse moves and corrective moves, um, an impulse move, let me just kind of draw this out of here real quick. An impulse move is the move in the predominant trend direction. Well, if our daily chart has impulse moves that are going up. If our daily chart has impulse moves that are going up, impulse move, impulse move, impulse move, and it has corrective moves that are the ones that are coming down, right? Corrective moves are the ones, uh, in this case, that are coming down. Corrective, corrective, corrective move. The thing about about impulse moves is they will blow through any demand uh, any 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 opposing levels on the smaller time period. So if I'm looking at let's say let's say here that we're looking at a daily chart. Well, if I'm looking at a daily chart, then this daily chart is going to blow through any supply levels that were formed on the 15 minute or the hourly chart and it will search out daily supply levels if that impulsive move is to the upside the corrective moves however may you know may still respect hourly and 15 minute levels so um you know we have high, technically i have higher swing lows right if i if i look at this uh if i look at this uh this area here i have a clear swing low and a, cl a clear swing low. And then my swing highs, technically this is a swing high. And I don't really have a higher swing high yet on the daily chart. I'm not technically quite there yet. I did get higher than this candle's high, which means by definition, I have to be getting a higher swing high. I just don't have it yet. Well, a, a very nice one would be a pullback to here, right? That would be that would give me my higher swing high and my higher swing low to allow price to continue to run higher. So over the next couple of days, I think we may get some decent little pullback. Um, the other thing that I do notice is, is that we're not quite closing on the highs. Um, in all of these days, we're, we're, we've not really been closing on uh, on the highs. We've been we've been selling off just a little bit here and not quite closing on the high. So there's a little profit taking there coming in at the end of each of these days. Um, if, if we started to see a, you know, a, a bigger wick into one of these levels, and then that would, that may, may be what feeds that pullback. So I know that's a lot of analysis for one market, but I think it's good to take a look at it from that bigger picture perspective of, you know, is our impulse move changed uh, on that, on that bigger chart, right? That daily chart. To, to tell us, okay, let's look for smaller time periods for reversals uh, on the on the demand side, but some of the supply ones may get blown through. So just keep that in mind, looking at those supply levels above us in current uh, this current time period. Um, in the Nasdaq, we are definitely you know we we hit this this level up here. Uh, I didn't feel like this was a super strong level of supply, and we've we've kind of hit it and kind of meh moved through it a little bit. So um, now that's that that level that we have in the Nasdaq. If you notice, you know, kind of when this was formed and when it was created, this was that the origin of that strong move down uh, in the in the S and P. It's this level right here, right? So our our confirmation level that I just put in is just above that. 
uh, and on the NASDAQ, that would be this area right up in here. So it's so the NASDAQ and the S&P don't line up with quality levels, which which is another reason why it's moved to confirmation on the S&P. Crude oil. So crude oil is continuing its uh, its move higher. We had taken a look yesterday uh, at this area right up in here for a potential reversal. Uh, we got a little bit of a reversal off of the level, but then it just kind of popped right through in the overnight sessions. Uh, it's not really, you know, depending on how tight you set your stop, it may not be completely over yet. Uh, but this level uh, is getting fairly weak up in here. Uh, I thought this was a decent little uh, little spot for a reversal, uh, but it's getting fairly weak. When I look at the momentum, what we see in our momentum in crude oil uh, is that I still do have uh, higher highs uh, on my momentum indicators. Uh, we've pulled back just a smidge in our momentum indicator with this new high, uh, but it is there is still uh, there is still momentum that is present. So I'm gonna uh, let me get rid of these studies here. So I'm gonna leave this one alone at the moment. Um, you know the uh, the supply level there just just didn't uh, necessarily come come to fruition and hold out very well. I will take a look below in in this demand area right down in here to see if we get a pullback into this region. Um, this was that breakout above uh, above this prior resistance and a pullback into here could be a decent little turning point trade. Uh, in gold, so in gold, I thought yesterday we may get a little bit of a of a of a move below this uh, twelve eighty two sixty. We've actually got a uh, you know we 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 did a touch below uh, and then popped back up through. Now technically, if you look at a breakout short, your stop would have to be above here, right? Because our uh, when we look at breakdowns or breakouts, our stops go below the prior pivot, right? That's this is the pivot is up here. Um, and so it hasn't, uh, it's, it's still kind of breaking down. If you miss the first breakdown, it looks like you're getting another bite at the apple, but now your stop would be above here because this would be the prior pivot. If you, if you, if you look, if you take the breakdown below this area, so still fairly far away. Um, but I think that it, uh, it still could work out to be a decent trade. If you look at this on the four hour chart. Um, on the four hour, you're, you're getting lower swing highs here, and it's putting in kind of this pattern right through here. Uh, and and if we anticipate that the market's going to continue to rally higher, uh, then it's then it's it stands to reason that we may see a bit of weakness in gold. Um, in bonds, uh, let me know in the comment section down below if any of you took our the the short we talked about yesterday in the bond market. Uh, so yesterday in the bond market, we had talked about shorting below. This level here and we did get a decent little pullback from that area we're coming back to our potential reversal demand area right through here next is the Aussie so in the Aussie dollar um, and somebody asked me one day they said how come you say Aussie instead of the Aussie dollar because I was teaching a class in Australia and the Australians were kind of offended that I said Aussie. I kept saying, oh, look, it's the Aussie. They didn't like that. It's the Aussie. So that, that's uh, somebody asked me yesterday, why, why do you say that? That's why. Um, so here we have a, a little bit of a, of, a, of a, call it supply area, but we didn't have this marked off yesterday because I didn't feel like it was a great level, especially since we started kind of going meh up into it, uh, and which is, and we've come into it and really done not a whole lot. Now, uh, once again, this is another picture of our, our upward momentum waning just a smidge, but not enough for me to really take a short against, and I still have a level way up here. So for now, I'm not going to really add anything to this position. I'm going to leave this kind of as is. I think if we do, you know, I think if we do start to break down, there's plenty of ability for price to run down to this region. So if you're more aggressive, I'd be okay shorting so long as you keep a a tight stop, maybe below this 71.44, uh, if you're more aggressive. It's definitely a more aggressive entry. You're kind of going counter the big picture, but there's room to run, I think, down to 70.61. In the euro, uh, the euro continues this four-hour charts, uh, this four-hour of chart madness. And so when I've got that four-hour madness in there, I don't really want to trade against that. I'm going to let that thing be for just a little bit. 
Uh, I'm going to hold off on really doing anything against this because I've got that that four hour time period of price going sideways, which is why we're seeing uh, all these. I mean, look at all the wicks. The wicks are when I see that many wicks, it's telling. All right, it's telling to me that there is some some imbalance there that I need to respect. But it's but it also tells me there's some indecision in almost every candlestick, and so I'm going to stay away. Canadian dollar. Um, we did pop higher in the Canadian dollar above our breakout that I talked about yesterday. So if you took that Canadian dollar breakout, uh, then you're doing pretty well and it's and it's continuing its move higher. Uh, we've had a little bit of a pullback in the overnight hours uh, to what could be considered a small area here uh, and a chance to buy on a reversal. So I think this has another uh, another leg higher in it if you are looking at this one for price to continue to move higher. Uh, we've got a little bit of a pullback. You can get high above the existing high um, because there's room to run up until that next level. Last, um, uh, but certainly, as we always say, not the least, uh, Japanese yen, Great British Pound. So we had, had hit our demand area that we talked about in the Japanese yen yesterday, and it came back up to the, to the breakout as the target, um, and now it's kind of come back down again. So now I'm going to remove both of these areas. And the reason I'm removing both of these areas is that both of them have been hit. But now what I have is a new setup. And what I'm looking at is this area right here. So now a breakdown below here. Now, the, the problem with this breakdown is I don't quite have the room to roam that I like to look for, right? So just keep in mind, this looks very similar to the last breakout short that we had, where it was a it was a a fairly small breakout with a potential for another small reversal uh, when price does come back into here. Looking at the Great British Pound, so the Great British Pound, we had talked about a breakout above this area. We got a little bit of a breakout, and then it just kind of meh, didn't do a whole lot um, off of that area. Uh, price action, once again, uh, it, it, as, uh, as I would say if I were four years old and didn't want to eat cauliflower, it's yucky. So it's a little bit of a yucky price action piece here. Uh, so I'm going to remove that one. Uh, there's really nothing in here else that I like uh, at the moment, right? I mean, there's some levels that are significantly further away, uh, like th like something down here. But I've got uh, I've got some time to go, I think, before we start to retest any of those levels. All right. So I know it was a fairly long video today, uh, but I wanted to really kind of spend some time and explain some of these bigger picture levels. Uh, tomorrow, there will be no daily market commentary as we have our weekly live trading session. Uh, if you'd like to join our trading session, go to tradersarmy.com. Uh, we have a, uh, It's uh, for the month of January, $20.19 for your first month. What a better way to kick out to kick off uh, 2019. So, all right, everybody. Hope you have an awesome, awesome day. And, uh,